Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode here in NHL 21. So in last episode we had the end of year one wrap up to see who won the awards, who retired, all that sort of stuff. And we also had the draft and we had a pretty good draft for the most part. Um, I'll show you guys who we drafted. Um, some of which you guys would know because they're real players that we drafted and some were EA generated guys But as you can see we brought in Patrice Bergeron with our first pick at third overall I think he was a pretty good pick for us because we don't really have I would say the greatest center core at the moment Like we do have Mark Savard, but obviously Bergeron being an elite two-way forward He could be a very good player for us on like the penalty kill and all that sort of stuff down the road So I'm really happy with him being a member of the Atlanta Thrashers. We also did bring in a low lead offensive defenseman in the second round in Isaiah Edmonds. So I'm very excited to see how this guy develops. Hopefully he grows a lot in the next like season or so. And then maybe he becomes that like medium elite offensive defenseman instead of a low lead. We also got Berzgalov, who's a top 9, Baikov, who's a low top 6D, we got Zikov, who's a low bottom 6, and we also got a medium elite defensive defenseman in the third round, so this guy could be intriguing. I don't know if he, how long it's going to take him to develop, but hopefully he gets some solid growth for the next few seasons. We also got Joey Malone in the seventh round, who's a bottom 6, Frolov, who's a top 6 forward, but only a 49, so this guy might not bank it, but... Other than that, we did pretty good. We also got a goaltender prospect into our system, and that is Brian Elliott. We might not end up being able to use Brian Elliott, depending on how he develops. I don't know how he grows, because I've never assimilated a whole lot of seasons with this roster build. So, uh, But yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how these guys develop on our team. But anyways, we're up here at the resign stage, and then we will get into free agency. And then we might do some of the season simulation in this episode, maybe not a whole lot if we are going to do so but i do have a few comments i'd like to go over first and the first one is from hawksfane88 he says savard i would sign for five years at eight million dollars so that's probably what we're going to try and resign savard to um i also asked him though uh, if there's anybody not worth bringing back or since we're probably tanking should we just bring mostly everybody back and uh, Hawksfan says, I would say just don't bother resigning anyone that doesn't have any trade values. So that kind of makes sense. So we probably won't resign a lot of our players that we had from last season. And then maybe just fill in the voids kind of with like some random guys. So yeah, and we also have one other comment. It is from sasha 5 Simard or Toussaint. I don't know if you're French. You probably are French. I don't know how to pronounce your name. But anyway, Sasha5, he says, For next season, I think you should put the scoring and shot frequency on high because of the high amounts of points during those times. Now, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying, but I don't really like filling with those type of uh, features in this game. That's why I haven't actually done any adjustments to like the shot frequency and stuff in any of my franchise modes. Like if I go to rules, I think it's in rules. Is it in rules? Uh, it should be down here somewhere I think yeah so like the scoring and like the shot frequency I, I have them on medium I don't really want to move them to high because I just don't want the simulation to all of a sudden be completely unrealistic so I'm gonna leave it the way it is but um, it's mostly because I have no idea how it will work with this team like if I would have done a practice sim beforehand and seen how high scoring was and stuff Maybe I would have used it, but right now I just don't feel safe doing it. So thanks for the suggestion, no Sasha5. I appreciate that. So let's get into our contracts now and get this resign stage done. See if we can get uh, Mark Savard on that good deal. And we are going to sign Bergeron to his ELC. He's probably going to be on the roster next season because in real life he was. The rest of these guys I think I'm going to leave for now. But uh, yeah, hopefully they get some good development for next season. Uh, next year or whatever okay so RFA wise obviously Dan Snyder is going to come back even though if he doesn't have a lot of value in 81 still and 25 years of age obviously he's going to come back um and I'm fine with giving him like multiple years because a lot of teams would still trade for somebody like this so we're going to give him a, a three year deal at 2.3 and then Brad Tapper I might give a yeah I could give him a two year deal because it's still tradable it doesn't have a lot of value, but still, we'll still sign him for two years. And then we'll just qualify these random 25-year-olds in the AHL. And we'll also qualify Kluczek. And then we will go to our UFAs, where we're going to sign Mark Savard to a five-year deal at $8 million. If he's willing to accept that, hopefully he does, because 
he's a big part of this team from now. Uh, so we'll try and get him at $8 million. If he rejects this, we'll obviously go up a bit. But five years at $8 million should be fine. Uh, I think I do want to bring back Lubos Barteshko because he's only 26. So we'll try and resign Barteshko to like a $2.1 million contract for one year. Uh, Tony Herkic is going to be let go of because he's 36 years of age. So he's only going to be on the drop off from here on out. So best of luck in free agency, Tony. We're also going to let go of Andy Sutton and a lot of our guys on our defensive core. Where he, like rework the defensive core to an extent. Um, Fart Fidet has probably like no value whatsoever, but he might be still a solid depth option. So you know what, we'll just sign Fart Fidet for one year. I don't want to give him a two-way deal, goddammit. We'll give him a one-year deal and we'll bring this all the way down to like 1200 And then Jeff Audgers is going to go as well because even though he's a really good fit for our fourth line, he's dropped off a lot. He's just a really physical player, like an enforcer, so we're going to let him go. And then everybody in terms of the AHL will just bring back because the AHL team uh, needs to have at least like a certain amount of players right in it. So we need to get all these guys back if possible. So we'll just give them all two-way deals. doesn't really matter how long because we'll eventually replace them with uh, prospects once we get some actual prospects that are ready to be in the AHL. So we'll assign them to all these different contracts. And that's good. And goalie-wise... We don't really, I, don't, I could find a new goalie this year in, in terms of the offseason. I am going to let go of Kasivi for sure. I think I will resign Helenica though, just so we at least have one goaltender. And then I will resign Vontny as well for the AHL. But yeah, I think I'll find maybe a new starting goaltender in terms of free agency. So let's advance today, see if we get all those guys back. Hopefully, all of them accept. We'll just keep, uh, go through this as fast as possible. Okay, so it looks like Barteshko and uh, Svarfa that didn't accept. Gogula needs to be signed still. Granak and Helenica. Let's give Helenica a little bit more. 1.2. And then, like I said, Barteshko is a decent player, I think. Uh, we might be overpaying for him, but we could always trade him away. That's a good thing. Even if he has like no value, we could still trade him away. And then Svarfidet, like I said, is more just a depth option. We'll just give them a decent amount of money. Doesn't really matter at this stage because we don't have, like, a maximum cat pit, right? So we'll give um, Gogula 925k for two years, see if he accepts that. And we'll just bump that up a bit as well. And then in terms of our RFAs, these guys are still qualified. Good. Everything's good there. Wait. What was that? It said something about Gens. Was that one of our scouts we couldn't get back? I don't even know. Uh, so Svarfadet is still not accepting. Hmm. I kind of want to bring Svarfadet back because he had 14 points in 37 games. It's not horrendous. But he is more of a defensive player. But I'll still try and bring him back for one year. I'll try and offer him like 1.9. I don't really care if I'm paying him almost 2 mil. And then I want Gogula back because he was actually really good when he got to the NHL for a bit. So he might actually play on the NHL team next season. We'll give him 1.1. And that should be good. Yeah, that is good. And they both accept it, I think. Yep, okay, we are pretty much good. So let's see what we have on a roster before we get into seeing who we could sign in free agency. Okay, so we got... Uh, Savard, Stefan, Snyder, and Bergeron is their four centers. Farfadet would probably be playing... Like, one of these guys could play always the wing, like Snyder maybe, for example. But, uh, yeah, we have five roster players there. Six, seven, eight. And then Jeff Cowan could technically play. So that's nine. And then we'd have ten. So we still need probably, like, another three forwards, maybe four forwards. So, yeah, we'll probably look for more right wingers. One, two, three, four, five, and we need another defenseman at least. And then we have two goaltenders. Okay. So we do need still a decent amount of stuff. Let's see what we can pick up. Like I said, we need probably a couple right wingers, three right wingers, we'll say. And then we'll pick up also like another defense, couple defensemen, or another defenseman at least. We do need a depth defender to too. 
Okay, let's see what's available in this free agency. So we don't want to make any like any huge splashes in free agency. So we're just going to sign some decent players that are kind of underrated. So for defensemen, I don't want to bring in somebody too good. I could just bring in a veteran or I could bring in somebody like Zuzan. Yeah, I think I'll bring in Andre Zuzan because he's only 26. He's a defensive defenseman. He does want a decent amount of money. But uh, and he's very physical, but uh, yeah, I think I'll bring him in, and he does fit all defensive pairings, so we'll give him a one-year deal. Or actually, yeah, we'll give him. I might be willing to give him two years. Yeah, let's just give him two years. He's only 26. He's definitely tradable. He probably will have some trade value. Um, so we'll bring him in, and then we need a depth defenseman. Let's see who we got here. Stan, we got Hans Janssen. All defensive pairings maybe as well. You know, I will just bring in Hans Janssen, why not? I don't really care if I'm getting anybody super good because like I said, I could just trade away some of these guys easily enough. So we'll bring in Janssen as a depth defenseman, which uh, solves their defensive problems. Then we need at least three right wingers probably. So in this case, we want actually some decent players maybe there's a 20 foot wow okay Kovalik I think I'll sign even though it's kind of unrealistic well yeah I think I'll bring in Kovalik if he fits our team which he does fit our second line so we'll bring in Alish Kovalik why not no teams are interested in him uh, and then I want to bring in just maybe two fourth liners I don't want this team to simulate too good but at the same time you guys didn't really give me any suggestions on who to sign because I didn't show you guys the actual free agent pool but um, Litowski, yeah, you know what, Litowski is decent, bottom six forward, we'll sign him for one year, it's a decent amount of money, but still, why not, and then we'll sign one more player, we'll sign somebody that's listed as, like, a depth forward, maybe, or, uh, actually, these fourth liners are, like, 77s, let's bring in another enforcer to replace, uh, Jeff Auders, maybe, Andre Wall is a third liner, not that I really want a third liner, Reed Lowe, doesn't fit anywhere, Hmm. We could always bring in Jody Hull. He's pretty old, though. Uh, we could bring in uh, Ronald Petrovicki, who I think actually played for Atlanta around this point in time. Maybe it was a little bit after or a bit before this. But, uh, yeah, you know what? We'll bring in Petrovicki. We'll just give him a one-year deal. Give him 1.85. I don't really care. And I think that would be it for our signings. So let's advance a few days, see if we get, get all those guys into our team. And then if so, then we'll sim to next season and we'll do a little bit of the season simulation once I get like the lines set up and whatnot. So Kolik is accepted, Zuzan's accepted, Petrovicki, Janssen, and Lutowski. So we got them all. That's good. Uh, we will keep actually up to date as well with the AI signings this free agency. So actually I might not get much of the season done for next episode. So... Maybe we'll just see uh, who uh, goes where during this off season. So those are our signings, though. Let's uh, advance till the end of this month, and then we'll take a look at what the AI does in terms of signings. Because with these type of old roster build franchises, I like to see where players sign. It's just kind of interesting when you see like an actual player sign with the team that they actually played for. So I wonder if there's going to be anything like that. Hopefully, we do have some interesting signings like that. Uh, because I don't know what it is. It's just really awesome seeing that. And in terms of trades, there's been no trades in this offseason so far. Let's just go to the bottom of this list. And then we'll work our way up. See who goes where. Okay, so Herdina to Columbus. I'll, I'll only announce the ones that uh, are uh, real players going to real teams. But I'll scroll through this kind of slowly as well so you guys can see. Just in case there's anything you want to bring up. Um, but yeah, we signed a decent amount of players. Pavel Dimitra, though, signs in Toronto for six years. Jeez. That's a really good pickup for Toronto. Like, Dimitra alongside of, like, Sundin and stuff. That's going to be a really good uh, tandem. Uh, and then Castle signs in Dallas. Marty Turco signed in Vancouver for seven years. So Dallas did not bring back Marty Turco. That is really questionable. Brian Leach signs in Detroit. That's really interesting. And they had another really good defenseman. Sean Horkoff signs in Chicago. Don't know why Edmonton didn't re-sign him. Any other interesting ones to bring up? Shatan signs in Philadelphia. Jokinen signs in Vancouver. Slava Kozlov signed in St. Louis. So we traded him away and then he didn't re-sign with the team that we traded him to. 
Dwayne Rolison signed with the Islanders. That's realistic because he was with the Islanders, but near the end of his career. Uh, Thomas Caberlet resigns in Toronto. Fernandez in LA. Darian Hatcher signs with Detroit. He actually went to Detroit the season after this, but uh, I don't think he's. Yeah, he didn't sign there for four years because he eventually went to like the Flyers. I'm pretty sure and stuff. Uh, Brian McCabe resigning to Toronto again. Sakura signed in Minnesota. Didn't he actually play in Minnesota at one point? Or am I mistaken? I think he played in Minnesota at one point. I could be completely wrong with that. Valerie Burley signing in LA. I think he played in LA at one point too. Could be wrong with that. Uh, anything else of note? Vishnovsky signing in Edmonton. Well, he got traded to Edmonton, but it was like not till like 2009. So that's kind of intriguing. Trevor Linden signing in the Islanders, where he used to play. Brian Rolston signs in the Islanders. A lot of big signings, it looks like, this offseason. So, the, like, the entire league is going to be a lot different for next year. But still, some pretty intriguing signings, I would say. Adam Oates in Philadelphia. Gar Snow in Dallas. Okay. Yeah, I'm really surprised that some of these guys actually hit free agency because you think with the uh, unlimited cap space, like a lot of these teams would just re-sign anybody they could. Mark Messier goes to Washington. Mika Kiprasov signs in Vancouver. Damn, I wish ho was hoping he would sign in San Jose, but whatever. Uh, Gary Roberts signs in Washington. That's another decent signing. Uh, anything else of note? Brent Johnson signs in Pittsburgh. He actually played with Pittsburgh at one point. Uh, anything else that is interesting? Doug Gilmore signs in Europe. Okay. Goodbye, Doug. Uh, anything else? Phil Housley in New York. Yeah, a lot of players are changing teams. Passy Nerman signs in Washington, so I guess he left Calgary. So he probably fell off the plane when he arrived in Washington. Uh, Tony Herkic, our former player, signs in Tampa Bay. Um, and that's almost it. There's still a lot of signings to go through. Dave Vanderchuk signs in Dallas. Hmm. Anything else? Wayne Primo signs in Calgary. He was with Calgary at one point. Uh, Ulf Dolan signs in Dallas, but I think he was with Dallas last season, if I'm not mistaken. And that is it for the signings. Also, Ruchinski signs in St. Louis. He did play for St. Louis at one point. But I think he did start in St. Louis in this roster build too. So, um, And yeah, I probably won't show you the signings for August because August is nowhere near as interesting unless there is a big name free agent, which there it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, there's no more big name free agents really. There's a couple goalies like Garon, but uh, that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's uh, sim to next season. And then we're going to adjust our lineup and see how good this team is going to look for next season. Hopefully we could tank another year and maybe get Ovechkin or Malkin in the draft. And maybe the year afterwards we could go for Crosby. And that would be pretty insane. But uh, we probably won't have the uh, luck on our side for the draft lottery, my guess. What is the owner goals for this season? Conservative buyer? Eh, we're not going to be a conservative buyer. We're just going to be a team that does bad. I'm going to try and make this team as bad as possible. But... Um, yeah, let me adjust these lineups, guys, and I will see you in a second. Okay, guys, so here is our lineup going into year number two. So we got Kofel, Chuck, Savard, and Heatley, which is a pretty good top line. Like I said, Heatley's not really a great fit for that top line, but we could always alt actually... You know what? We're going to put Heatley back to the second line. Uh, but yeah, Kovalik is going to be there instead. Um, he's not a, really a, that bad of a player, but uh, he's not a fantastic player by any means, but he's still young. We do also have Patrick Stefan and Lubo Sparteshko. Third line, we got Tapper, Snyder, and Litevsky. And fourth line, Petrovicki, Bergeron, and Cowan. So our forward core looks actually pretty good. And I'm kind of scared that our team is going to over-simulate because of the chemistry and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know if we want it to be that way or not. So we could always trade away any of these guys if you want me to. But I'm not sure how we are going to actually simulate. And then defensively, we got Caberlet and Tremblay. Weaver and Zuzan and Tamer and Charnquist. And in terms of goaltending, we got Defoe and Helenica. And scratch wise, we got Janssen and Sfarfidet. So, yeah, that is our lineup. So, we will simulate, I think, one month in this episode just so you guys could get a little bit of a taste for how this team is. But, uh, yeah, for right now, I don't really know if I want to be like that good of a team. So, we might have to make some moves if this team actually simulates well. 
Uh, let me quickly like look at the draft class as well. So yeah, as you can see, Alex Ovechkin is the unanimous number one overall pick. But there is some EA generated guys already. So we got Yerky Suhonen. Interesting. Wonder how good that guy is. There's also Michael McKay and Terrence Lee. And then Evgeny Malkin's supposed to go here. He's also like high elite, but he's like 77, I think. So the rest of these guys, I believe, are probably going to be like medium elites. I don't know. Actually, maybe Malkin was a medium elite. I don't remember. But yeah, anyways, I'll show you guys all these names that are up here in this first little bit of the draft. So yeah, anyways, those are the created players that are supposed to go in. And there's also a lot of goalies I made for this draft. As you can see, Devin Dubnik, um, there was a couple others, I'm pretty sure. But it seems like there's a lot of EA-generated goalies as well. Actually, never mind, maybe I only made one goalie for this draft. Did I only make Dubnik for this draft? I might have. I don't remember. But anyways, that's that. Uh, let's uh, sim one month and see how this team is. Just to get a little bit of a taste to see how uh, these line combinations perform, so... Let's see, not even worry about the preseason. Let's just go right to the 1st of November. And hopefully this team isn't too good. Because like I said, I do not want to be a playoff team. So we might want to have to trade away some of these guys, some of our better players. I don't know. Do we trade away somebody like Danny Heatley? Because <laughs> Danny Heatley technically left the Atlanta Thrashers after the season. So. Because he was traded to the Sens for Marion Hosa in like the 05 I think it was in 2005 during the like the lockout. Uh, Yannick Trouble has been injured. Okay, that's good because that's one of our best defensemen. And we are off to a really bad start, which is great. Okay, but it could be because Trombley was out of the lineup. We'll take Janssen back out and put back in Trombley. There you go. But yeah, hopefully this team is pretty bad. And of course, after I'm saying that, we win three straight games. Yeah, this team is kind of like all over the place to start off with. Stop simulating good place. Okay, we're 7 4 0 oh, 1. I do not like that. We are simulating way too good for this team. And Patrick Stefan somehow has 16 points in 12 games. Yikes. I don't want Patrick Stefan to become the great player he was supposed to be. That second line is doing really well. And then the top line has been pretty good as well. Kolik has actually been really quiet for that top line. Uh, Letowski, wow, Letowski is really good. Why is he simulating this good? I don't know. Dan Snyder's got six points. Tapper's got five. Callan's got two points. Bergeron's got four points already. And Pedro Vicky's got two points. Yeah, I don't really like our team right now in terms of point production. Because I don't want us to be winning games. Cabrillet's got 8 points in 12 games. That is not good. Trombley's got 4. Our defense has been actually pretty good. Especially that top 6 pairing. Jeez, plus 7 and plus 6. And then our goaltending is it our problem. How the heck does Byron Defoe have a 9.23 save percentage? And a 2.37. Okay, we might have to trade away Byron Defoe and get another bad goaltender into the team. That might be the thing that we want to do. And I think that's going to do it. Yeah, right, let me just actually take a quick look at the trading block, just in case you guys want me to make trades already this early in the season, just because I'm kind of curious on who's out there in the block. Like, there is a lot of good names out there. Like, if we wanted to go for a cup, we could. But at the same time, this team needs to kind of get some good more prospects in because we have, like, no tra uh, trade value amongst our entire team. But there is a lot of good pieces out there in terms of roster players, it looks like, at least so far. It's funny how some teams have, like, really bad players on here. Like, a low bottom six being on the trading block, it's like, what the heck are you going to get for low bottom six? And Detroit put Jimmy Howard on the block despite drafting him. Hmm. I don't know why they would put him on the trading block, because I, I know they're a contending team, but still. It's kind of weird. Like, I hate also when teams, like, they sign really good players and then they decide that they want to put them on the block right away. There's a lot of good players in LA as well that are on, like, one-year deals. Like, we could totally find a really good piece if we wanted to be a good team. 
like Nashville had a lot of good pieces. There's a lot of also prospects that are really bad, like a low AHL top six forward on the trading block. You wouldn't see this in a normal franchise mode. Not that any team's going to want to trade for a AHL top six forward, really. But you do have those sometimes, I think, in this roster build, those type of trades. But yeah, if you guys see anything you want me to trade for in the next episode just to make this team worse, let me know. Because I could just trade away pretty much anybody and then just call up somebody like Gogola from the AHL, that type of thing. Like, I signed those players more just as, like, potential trade uh, bait pieces, but... But yeah, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode. So in next episode, we will sim more of the season. We might make some trades if you guys think it is necessary. But let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll see you guys next time.